Okay, guys, we're almost done. Um, as I was finishing up, there were two more things I thought of that I should tell you. Um, don't worry if you're not finishing and, and looping the same way that I am because you might have a different number of sections than I do. I ended up with 15 somehow. Um, I, I, I normally like to try to, um, uh, on my store-bought ones I have an uh, even number of sections, but this one ended up with 15. Eh, doesn't matter. It all looks, and it ends up with the same product at the end, so that's okay. Um, and I was thinking, you know, for those of you who might have um, arthritis or problems with your hands, you can still do this project. Um, if you have a, a large crochet hook, you can use that to, to pull the thread up instead of your fingers all the time. So um, see if that works for you. So, as you can see, um, I've only got a little bit of wool left from my whole skein of wool. And what I want to do, and it doesn't matter if you end up on the beginning section or the last section, doesn't matter. You want to make sure, though, that you have enough left to go the, all the way around uh, until the end. And I still have a teeny tiny little bit left, and that's okay, I can cut that off. Um, and, and so we need all of this left to, um, like I said, cast off. So this is super easy. I'm just going to loop my wool through the bottom of every section. I'm not going to skip any sections this time. Because now what I'm doing is just securing it so that it doesn't unravel when I pull it off of my knitter, my spool knitter. So you go all the way around and just come up through the bottom. This is exciting stuff, hey guys? <laughs> um, if you want to have a fringe on each end, of course you want to make sure you leave um, a lot more wool left at the end than I did. I, I'm not putting a fringe on, so I just made sure I just had just enough to do this last sit step. And I'll leave some um, written directions at the bottom to show you how to add a fringe if you want to. Uh, and it's a nice little thing to add uh, for that finish, totally finished effect. So here we go. I'm almost done. Three more to go. Oop, you see, that one already came off, and that's okay. Not a big deal because that's my next step. I'm going to now just very gently start pulling it off of all of the sections. And it shouldn't unravel on you because we just did that little loop on all of them. All right, so now this can come off. Ta-da! And now look at how wide that is. That's way wider than the scarf, right? Because as it was coming off the spool knitter, um, when it was up at the top, it was really stretched out, but then it, it sort of brought itself in. So to make the end the same size as the rest, you just pull that, th that um, piece of wool that we just looped through everything, and that sort of gathers it up a little bit more. So pull it and, and make sure you sort of stretch things out so that it's all even all the way around. Pull your thread up. Sorry, I keep calling it thread. It's wool. <laughs> pull your wool up. And um, so now I have a longer tail again, actually, because I pulled it through. And again, that's okay. I'm just going to, um, with my fingers, just bring it through the stitches again. And there is no science to any of this. You just, and because I'm using a variegated wool, you can't tell where it's going in and out, and nobody will notice. And I think, you know, even with a solid wool, you won't be able to tell. Um, and that's just to sort of, again, secure it so that I have a nice long tail. If anything were to become unraveled, it would take a long time for it to, to go through the whole end. And I can just keep doing that, and then um, until I'm, until I have hardly any left, and then at some point, I just want to knot it 
and I like to do a little double knot and then I'm really sure it's not going anywhere and again I still have some left over so I can either cut that off or I can just weave it in and out so you, you don't even really need scissors for this project um, if you're just doing a plain scarf with no fringe so I would weave that in and out until until that's all woven in and so remember at the beginning of your scarf we had a little bit of a tail that was sticking out and you're just going to do the exact same thing on that end too just to secure it and then you have a whole scarf now the the ball of wool that I just used for this one was a little smaller than normal so um, my scarf is a little shorter than normal and again there's no set length that you need to make it no set width of course it's all up to you and so this one will just be like a nice little um, not a muffler but you know just a, a neck warmer I guess and if I really wanted to get fancy I guess I could put a button up here and um, have it come through one of the holes here but um, I'm not that fancy. <laughs> I like my crafts to be super easy, super simple. So, um, so there's my scarf all done. And that hardly took me any time at all. That, that took me about an hour and a half maximum. And it's so nice and soft and I really like it, but uh, I'm going to give it away though. <laughs> In fact, uh, just like the pillowcases that uh, I told you about a few weeks ago, um, I'm making scarves for the homeless as well and um, because one of the shelters um, they get a lot of people at Christmas time and so I want uh, and they've only got about 24 beds so I'm making scarves uh, as a Christmas present for each one of them so that they can keep warm and so that they know somebody out there uh, cares about them and, and wants them to keep warm and because this is so quick and fast and easy to do. It's the perfect craft for, for something like that. So I hope you had fun and I hope you liked the video uh, that we did and uh, leave some comments at the bottom and let me know. Let me know if you're going to make some scarves this winter and let me know if you want to learn how to make some other different types of scarves too, okay? Thanks so much!